everybody! Welcome back to Heather is Making Stuff. I am Heather, obviously, um, but today we're actually not going to be making anything. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about whitening your knitting machines that may be yellowed with age. It's something that I've done about a year ago on a um, Singer SK155 knitter and ribber both that I had that were extremely yellow so if you've been following my blog or my Instagram you've probably seen these photos before when I did that initially um, and I'm revisiting it again because I recently got a brother 940 and uh, KR850 just trying to remember all the numbers KR850 ribber that were a little bit yellowed as well so there was a few more pieces that I wanted to do so we are going to get into exactly how to do that in just a second if you're going to look up information about the process before we begin, and I do encourage you to do that definitely, what you're looking for is called RetroBright. There's a lot of information about it on the internet. Basically, there was someone who came up with this recipe for whitening these yellowed ABS plastics. It only works on ABS plastics, just to uh, tell you that right off the bat. So it's not going to work on every kind of plastic. It, for example, did not work when I tried to do my ribber covers, those little vinyl, I think they're vinyl, I'm not sure exactly, pieces that slide on to keep you from catching your sleeves on the ribber and stuff, did not work on those. But it works great for the majority of the plastic that makes up the body of the knitting machine. So the, the carriage covers, it's worked on those for me. The plastic pieces at the sides, I'll show you those as well. Basically just about every other piece of plastic on the knitting machine seems to be ABS plastic, so it works really well. Why it happens, just a little quick background, is because those plastics have a chemical added to make them more resistant to fire. Ah! And for whatever reason, when it's exposed to UV light, that chemical causes the plastic to turn yellow. So it is very normal and it does not harm the machines at all, but cosmetically it just for some people doesn't look as nice. Like for me, I want to make them look as shiny and new as possible. So I'm gonna take you through how to do that right now. Let me show you an example of what I mean by yellowed. This is actually not the greatest example because it's not very yellow, um, but this is the river carriage for my KR850. And if we get right close in here, I hope it shows up, you can see that the plastic is yellowed. So in this area here, it's more yellow. And right here, in the shadow from this lily button knob, you can see that it's it's whiter. So that is probably closer to the original color of the carriage. Okay. Here's a piece that I did yesterday. This is the racking handle. I'll share a before and after photo of this as well, but this is what it looks like now. It's nice and even because this was half and half. The part that had sat facing the window was yellow and the other half was not. So I'm happy with that. It just looks a little newer, bright and shiny. I like it. So I'm going to see what I can do for this carriage. Over and this here. is the ribber itself. You can see this right hand side rack, or not side rack, side plastic bit is also quite yellow, especially when you compare it to the color of the 940 that it's attached to. It's, it's much more yellow. And over here, this little knob here, this side is more yellow from where it was against the window or facing the window. This plastic bit is probably okay, like I'll just leave that one. But if I can get the right hand piece off, I'm gonna do that piece too. One more thing before we begin, I just want to remind you that everything that you're going to see in this video is my own experiences with the process. I'm not here to advise you on what to do, only to show you something that I found was possible. Do this at your own risk, please. Understand that you are coating your plastic parts of your machine in a, in a strong peroxide solution. So if you have any concerns about the process or you're worried about it causing damage, you're worried about it weakening the plastic, you can definitely do your own research on that and come to your own conclusions. But if you do have any concerns, do not attempt this because you know it's one of those things that you can't take back once you've done it. And I would hate for someone to do this and then say, you cracked my machine, it broke, I did this because you said so. So just again, at your own risk, always, and do your research first. Now let's get started. All right, so once you're ready to go to town, all you need is the pieces that you're trying to whiten a paintbrush and a little plastic container, if you've got one, make things a little bit easier. And this 
40 volume hair developer cream. I got that at Sally's Beauty Supply. It's probably about $4. It wasn't expensive at all. And I've not even used half the bottle. And I've done an entire SK155 and ripper setup, as well as the KR7 and some other bits and bobs, the racking handle you saw yesterday as well. So it'll go a long way. Now, obviously, I could not get my plastic piece off of the end of this ribber without some difficulty. So I'm just gonna leave it and wrap it up and do it on the machine. And I'm, I'm not gonna take off the carriage cover either. I'm really doing this the lazy way, but uh, it works anyway. And then of course the most important ingredient that you need is a warm sunny day. So we have that today. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the phone up on a tripod so you can watch me do this. So get your developer and pour some into your handy little plastic container. This one actually came with hair products, so I know it's not going to get melted from the developer. And take your paintbrush, and the process is essentially just paint it on to any of the sections that you want to whiten, avoiding areas where you don't. So carefully avoid, you can see the brown plastic piece there, avoid that. Otherwise, just paint it on with a, a fairly heavy hand because you'll need to make sure it's nice and evenly coated. And same as in your hair, this product will only continue to work while it's wet. So if it dries out, it's going to stop working. So we are going to wrap the pieces up in these plastic bags after. I did forget to mention that you'll need bags at the beginning. Plastic wrap or bags is fine. I should also tell you that you should be wearing gloves while you do this and that you absolutely do not want to get this into your eyes on your skin, your clothes, your hair, take proper precautions. So basically just paint this on everywhere in a nice even thick layer. And once you're done, wrap all the pieces up as best you can. So that's that. Once you've got everything wrapped up as best you can, just leave it in a warm sunny place and let the magic happen. Try to make sure that there's no obvious wrinkles in the bag around the parts that you're trying to lighten because you'll see that it'll end up streaky. So try and make sure the bag is as flat as possible and it's okay if it's touching actually. But you really want this to stay moist. Sorry, I know people hate that word. So if you can seal the Ziploc, so much the better. If you can't, just come back and check on it every so often to make sure it's not drying out. I'll probably have to check on this one a bunch because this bag is not the greatest, but this is what happens when you're lazy. So we'll just go ahead and leave those in the sun. I'll check on them in a couple of hours. It's about 11 o'clock right now and we'll see what happens. Here we are after 30 minutes. Already some progress. Still needs more time, but we're making progress. Here we are at about an hour 15. Going well, I'm gonna reapply, I think, to this end of the river. The carriage is coming along really nicely because it's sealed better. So I just moved this flipper up to make sure there's no weird shadow marks, but I don't think I need to reapply there. It's coming along. And over here, this little knob, you can see, looks great actually. It's not quite done yet, but it's getting there. It's about 3 p.m. right now, so it's been about four hours since I initially put this out here. It's looking pretty good. I think that might be as good as we're gonna do. Um, I might leave this just a little longer just to see if we can get any more action on this side rack but it's pretty pretty good and if we come around I keep saying side rack it's not a side rack come around here this little thing I'm trying to keep my shadow out of the shot here it's looking pretty good that's that's a really good result on that so I'm definitely happy with that the carriage actually went much faster because it's sealed in the bag so I checked this several times and it was 
already pretty good, but I left it just a bit longer anyways. But I'm really happy with those. I think I might just reapply to the end side plastic piece here one more time, just see if we can get any brighter on that, but it actually does look like it matches the other side pretty well, so I might just leave it. And then I will clean it up and show you the final result. So here we are with everything cleaned up and back on the machine. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how nice that looks. Because I know I am. This little knob, oops, nice and bright. Can't really see more of it than that. But that looks great, the whole carriage. And the side piece here, that's quite dramatic. Much closer in color to the 940 above. And it much more closely matches the left side, which wasn't, as you recall, wasn't yellowed. That piece there, you remember its right side was pretty yellow and now it's not. So I'm really happy with that. The only thing I will mention, I'm pretty sure some of the peroxide got under this piece here and caused it to bubble. Um, probably because there's a glue under there holding on this little brown piece of plastic. So now probably if I took the carriage cover off and did that properly, it wouldn't have been an issue, maybe, but uh, I didn't. So that's what happens when you do things the lazy way. <laughs> I thought I was trying to avoid it as much as possible, but I must have got some that went underneath there. So bear that in mind if that's important to you. This I don't really care about, to be honest, and it could have just been the heat of being out in the sun for three hours, four hours in a bag that did it as well. Maybe it was even moderately like that before, but I don't think so. Um, I might try and pry that off and just clean out the old glue and glue it down again. Once I see maybe after it's been in the house cooling for a while, maybe it will contract. I'm not sure. So that is one thing to be aware of. Definitely try and keep the peroxide away from that. But otherwise, you can see how much of a difference it made. Just like a crazy difference on those little buttons. The side flipper was pretty yellow. So I'm really happy with that. I think it looks so much better. It looks much more matched in age to the 940, which isn't 100% either. Like there's some yellowing on the end of the 940, but I'm really happy with that. I think it looks much nicer it doesn't look like it's nicotine stained, which for whatever reason drives me crazy. I'm not a smoker, but it bothers me. So I'm really happy with that. I would call this a success. If you have any questions or comments that you want to put in the comments below, feel free. And I will do my best to answer it as much as I can. As always, remember, your mileage may vary. So, you know, if you're not comfortable doing this or this is something that you think will damage your machine, please do not attempt it. <laughs> this is my results only. Um, but if you do want to give it a go, good luck and I hope it works out. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. <laughs>